Okay, today we're going to go through criteria D, which for SL students is the last part of the comparative study that you need to focus on, and for HL students is the last part of the main part of the comparative study before you have to respond with your own work. So today we're going to look through a PowerPoint presentation. We're going to look at some good examples, some bad examples. I'm going to provide you with a layout, provide you with some questions to think about. I'm going to talk about the rubric or the success criteria for this. Um, I'm going to talk about just some notes that we need to keep in mind when we're putting this together. Now, in all honesty, this should be the quickest of the components you put together because it requires very, very minimal research. It is all based upon knowledge that you found already. Um, what you will need to consider is you'll need to consider what you have already written across the different slides, presenting it in a different way, but also drawing critical and accurate comparisons and similarities between the pieces of work. Because that's all criteria D is, it's a compare and contrast. Look at artwork A, B and C and say what is similar or different about them, both the formal analysis, sorry, the formal analysis, the cultural significance and the function and purpose. So some bits of this presentation I'm going to read word for word and some bits I'm going to expand upon and some bits I'm going to trim down as we go through. Um, but let's see what we do. Okay, so very, very important to note that this is not just a copy and paste activity. You don't just, for example, take a paragraph on light from artwork A and a paragraph on the use of light from artwork B and put them together and say, oh, look, they both use light. You need to either reword those or you need to say, as noted earlier in my comparative study, both artwork A and artwork B are pivotally formed or made up or composed by their use of light. And then expand or talk about that. Talk about how the artists have used, have both used light to draw attention to a subject matter or how both the artists have used, you know, something that was culturally significant at the time period to be their main subject or focus of the work. So it's, it's kind of saying, yes, artwork A and artwork B do this, but why do they do this? Why is this similar or why is it different? Um, the other thing to talk about is the deadline for this. So the deadline for this falls during your, um, what do you call it, your get a job week. Um, the reason for this and the reason it's before the weekend, Thursday the 30th of June, is so that I can have them all sent across to me and I can work that weekend before we have those last two days in school and I can give you accurate and detailed feedback. Now if it's not in or it's not done then I can't give you the feedback and you're reliant on coming back in September and, and literally handing it off to your new teacher and saying, oh I finished this, can you please give me some feedback on this. I've given you my teams, uh, obviously I've put submission by teams but I've also put my personal email on this. Um, just because over the next few days, especially next week, my school laptop will be going back in. So I'm not necessarily going to have as easy an access to that stuff. So if you send it both to me on Teams and to my personal email as well, it's much easier for me to kind of be able to, to get through that. And even if it's a case of saying, oh, well, it's on my, um, it's on my uh, Google Slides comparative study, then just make sure that link is again shared with that email if you put it through. So, criteria D, this should say, oh, first mistake, that's not great. Demonstrate an effective identification and critical analysis of the connections, similarities, and differences between the selected artworks, objects, and artifacts. Okay, and a quote from the IB, at the highest level of achievement, the work will critically analyze, I should say, the connections, similarities, and differences between the selected pieces. These connections are logical and coherent, showing a thorough understanding of how the pieces compare. Okay, so you are making meaningful connections. This isn't you saying, oh, well, artwork A uses the color red and artwork B uses some purple and they're kind of similar, so we're going to talk about those together. No, it's, it's, it, it's, it's discussing in meaning in great detail the fact that you know, the choices these artists have made and everything that's influenced them putting the work together is, is important. Um, yeah, so let's go through this. So there are three slides you're going to do this in. Um, that would be my suggestion to you. There are other ways that we're going to look at and how you can do it, but my suggestion to you would be to do it in three slides. First slide, artwork A versus artwork B. Slide two is artwork A versus artwork C. And slide three is artwork B versus artwork C. Now, over the past, I have even suggested the use of something called a Venn diagram. Now, if you're not sure what a Venn diagram is, if I quickly pop open Google and pull up, it's essentially something that looks like this. Okay, so you'd have artwork A, artwork B, artwork C. You'd have all the differences within the sections of the circle closest to the title, and in the overlapping circles, that would, there, that would then be where you'd have the similarities. Traditionally, these do not grade very well. 
um, because they're very, very difficult to read. Venn diagrams are not not something which is functional or easy to interpret, um, which then impacts on your criteria E, which is the presentation. So I would suggest staying away from Venn diagrams. Um, again, we are going to look at some examples of how you can do this in a second, um, but just keep that in mind. If nothing else, I'm not going to put a Venn diagram in because they don't look good. Um, okay, so comparing the cultural context of the selected pieces, comparing the formal qualities of the selected pieces, and comparing the function and purpose, that is your intent. You are basically going through criteria A, B, and C, um, but comparing them between them. So everything you talk about here should not be about one of the pieces of work. It's, it's always in comparison. Okay, this artwork does this and this artwork does this. Even if you're doing the, the contrasts or the differences, artwork A does this, artwork B does not. This is because. If you just give me a list of things that one has and the other one doesn't, then okay, you're meeting like the minimum requirements of what you need to do because you've at least got a brain up there that's able to identify the differences between the pieces of work but it's not critically analyzing, or it's to the highest extent probably like um, examining it in a very underdeveloped manner. I think that's the, the kindest way to put it. Uh, comparing material, conceptual, and cultural significance of the pieces if, um, if required, um, which sometimes it will be if the materials are similar. If you've looked at two pieces that are uh, photography based, if you've looked at two concepts that are similar, don't just describe or list the similarities or differences. Use charts, tables, or drawing diagrams to help your support. Uh, Venn diagrams are hard to read, and you might create a t you might create a timeline of your artists, art movements, or events to talk about or to highlight. Oh, this piece was made in the 1400s, and these pieces were made in the 2000s. Look at this huge time gap that exists here between the two pieces of work. Okay, that is a visual manner in which you could present this information, which would make it more visually appealing. Create analytical approaches to where you, where you create or identify connections. Okay, let's look at some good examples. Uh, this is artwork A, this is artwork B. Uh, down the middle, compare formal, uh, formal, uh, formal elements, function and purpose, cultural context, and then contrast and so differences on the side between texture and movement, color and value. Um, so again, everything which is being presented here, this was a six out of six which scored um, within this criteria. Uh, so it's a very high achieving example. You'll notice there are no references on this page, which again reinforces the idea that the compare and contrast comes from you. It doesn't require additional research, um, or at least it doesn't to get a high grade. This is another example, again, uh, surprisingly, because I think the, the look on this is a bit hideous, but uh, this is another example of a piece of work which scored a five or a six out of six for the criteria D. Um, this is part of the comparison of the formal elements, so they've literally gone down. These are the three pieces of work, A, B, C, so this is different already because it's not comparing two pieces, it's comparing all three on the same slide. This is a formal analysis comparison where they've listed the three main portions of, or the three main aspects of the work, um, and then they've just talked through how they are similar or different between one another. Another strong example, again, artwork A, artwork B, function and purpose, value, so they've specific value, proportion, and shape and balance, they've specifically highlighted into certain areas. Um, this doesn't necessarily talk about cultural significance in any great detail, from what I can see listed, but maybe through reading it, you do that a little bit more. But subheadings, very important. Using these colored boxes to separate stuff up, also very important. And no points for guessing this is our bad example. Comparisons and connections continued. Um, comparisons, they both have artwork A, artwork B, have rougher texture in terms of detail compared to that of someone else's. Um, the legend of the Kraken depicted is the most famous and well known of all the three legends. Like, this is super basic, super undeveloped, underdeveloped stuff. So, yeah. So, again, as I said before, most effective way to do this over three slides artwork A versus B, A versus C, B versus C. <coughs> You can, if you want to, use tables like this and do all three of them. Have like one for formal analysis, one for cultural significance, and one for function and purpose. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like this is the easiest to read. But again, I'm going to go up to you. And I've, essentially what I've done here is I've taken this slide and I've made a significantly more hideous version of this, um, which you can take and you can change the color boxes for. But this just, if you are... Um, completely unable to put it together. This should be there to help you. And that's it. This is the end. This is the last part of your, or at least for SLs, this is the last part of your comparative study. 
Hey Charles, obviously when you get your feedback back from completing this, uh, you will have suggestions on what you could investigate, but your criteria F, um, I'm gonna record another one of these four so you have a good direction what to go into. Um, but for now, this is what we will wrap up. Um, very, very good luck in getting started with this. I am due to see all of you over the next couple of days, but in case I don't, in case you're off or around, hopefully this will be helpful with walking and talking through that. Um, and I'll catch you guys soon.